everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Witch Wednesdays with the Mead Mashers Guild. I am your resident mead maiden, Courtney. And today we are going to be making something I'm excited about. Ignore the Chihuahua, he, he walks around, he does things. Uh, we are going to be taking our first foray into a lemon mead. It is Swing Dingle by Tamarack Jacks. Stay tuned. All right, so for this recipe, we're gonna start out with a simple syrup because this is a sherbet, not an ice cream. So this actually requires no dairy. So huzzah for all you lactose intolerant people. We're gonna start out with three cups of water and a cup and a half of just regular white sugar. We already mentioned in a prior video, this is not a diet zone. If you don't like that, you don't have to stay. Now we're also going to be adding, I'm adding the zest of a whole lemon. It said only a tea, like typical recipes only ask for like a teaspoon, but this is a, we're using a mead that I'm not overly, overly too familiar with. So this is more, we really want that lemon flavor to come out of everything. So we're going to combine that over medium heat until all the sugar is dissolved and we will come back when all the sugar is dissolved. All right, so I have let this mixture boil for or, and simmer for about five minutes over medium heat. As you can tell, most of the color has leached out of the zest that was put into the simple syrup, and it smells like lemon candy up in my kitchen now, so that is not a bad thing. Also, most recipes that I've referenced tell you to strain out the lemon zest, I like it rustic, it doesn't bother me. Does it bother my kitchen helper? Nah. You can't hear him, apparently, because he's gone mute. No. There we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna add half a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice, and this is fresh squeezed lemon juice. To our mixture. Turn off the heat, and I'm also going to add a full can of the Swing Dingle from Tamarack Jacks. Now it's going to be a little weird because it is a sparkling mead, but we're just going to go with it. And the heat will get rid of a lot of the carbonation, so give that a stir for a few minutes until most of the carbonation is gone. Now once you've stirred it and gotten rid of most of the carbonation, we're going to end up putting it in an ice cream machine. If you do not have an ice cream machine, you can jerry-rig something in regards to some freezer bags. Uh, have one giant freezer bag, filled it with your mixture, make sure it's very well sealed, put it inside of another freezer bag that has ice and rock salt in it, and seal that up and kind of mix it and smooch it together until you start getting a sherbet or ice cream. Now, we're not going to do that because <laughs> I actually have an ice cream maker. Uh, one thing we are going to do, though, is off camera, we're going to be setting this into an ice salt bath to cool down the mixture before I put it into the ice cream maker. That way, we don't end up with sloppy sludge as opposed to sherbet when all is said and done. So we will come back once this has been cooled down and ready to put into our ice cream maker. All right, so now our mixture is cooled. I'm going to put it inside the ice cream maker. It has this little bucket inside that is pre-frozen. And the process of it churning in here, as I'm spilling everywhere, is that it takes and removes any heat from the mixture, which we kind of negated by cooling it down in the first place, now. and starts to freeze. I'm gonna flip that on, and we will come back in a couple of minutes and I can show you what it is when it's uh, mid-stage frozen. All right, so as you can see here, it's starting to freeze up and we've meet, reached about about a third of the way through the freezing process. Now this, once it gets to a certain point, it starts freezing really fast. So once that ha once it gets to a point where it's starting to freeze and it's starting to get a little hard for those blades to work through, we'll transfer it into a container and pop it in the freezer. So here we have it, the finished sorbet made with the Swing Dingle from Tamarack Jacks. Jacks. I'm sorry, Tamarack Jacks. So 
it, it turned into more of a shaved ice sort of dessert than an actual sorbet. But Something I'm not complaining. Say. It's it it, S- it smells amazing. It smells like lemon drops. Absolutely, it smells like lemon candy. Oh yeah. Oh, tastes like it's. I got that syrupy from when you made that simple syrup with the lemon, mm-hmm. and then it's cold and it's just oh. I can even taste a little bit of the honey from the meat. Mm-hmm. Just a wee bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is good. Yeah, I didn't want to add any more sugar to it. <laughs> yeah, no. That mean having this too, especially like on a really hot, muggy day like we are now, is this is great. Mm. If you want, you could garnish it with like a lemon wedge, a sprig of mint. I can get the little bits of uh, rind. Yeah. Or the uh, zest, but it doesn't bother me in the least. Yeah, it, I'm finding like like when I get a little bit of the zest, it almost dissolves a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's something hard where you got to chew on it. It's it, it, it's like that little kind of little pop of flavor, and then it kind of just mm-hmm. goes away. It's really nice. Almost kind of like um, if you were to drink uh, orange juice with pulp kind of thing. Yes. Keep in mind, this is not kid-friendly. <laughs> this is a, basically an adult slushy. So, not for those under the age of 18. No. But, I mean, it's great, like, is on, on a hot, warm day for the summer here. I know we're having some high temperatures here. We are in Alberta. Uh, again, from rain and that being muggy, I, I think this is really good. Uh, great treat to have on these hot days. And, I mean... Good for me too, and especially too if like if you're somebody has um uh, sensitivity to like lactose or dairy, this is good too because you know you can still have a cool summer treat and you don't have to worry about it as well. Mm-hmm. But no, but this is awesome, Courtney. Thank you very much. This tastes freaking amazing. Well, it didn't turn out exactly the way I was hoping, just because I think the addition of the mead might have changed the makeup or the. I know, like if there's a little more time for cooling, it might it might have been a little different as well. Or if I didn't use mead and I just stuck with the sugar and the honey or the sugar and the lemon yeah. and whatnot. It might have turned out differently, but I still think it turned out amazing. I think it turned out great too. But if you're looking for the recipe, we'll leave a link in the description below and then we will for our taste and when we do the swing dingle from Tamarack Jacks. But until next time, peace. Bye.